President. Nice here. You. Nice to you. Away from the tumult of Westminster and into the comparative political calm of a European war zone. Here, the Prime Minister is undeniably a popular figure. He's seen as a steadfast ally. He offered a gift, a book about the Queen, and then promised enduring support for the host nation. We will continue as we have from the beginning to provide the military equipment that you need, and now, of course, the training that may be necessary to go with that, uh, with that new equipment, so that you, the Ukrainian people, the Ukrainian armed forces, uh, will be able to do what I believe Ukrainians yearn to do, and that is to expel the aggressor from Ukraine. From the Ukrainian president, the warmest of thanks. Britain endorsed. This is your second visit, Boris, to Kyiv after the uh, after 24th of February, the beginning of the full-scale invasion by the Russian Federation to our soil. And I'm grateful to you for this attention to our country, uh, to all our people, to our country, and to your leadership and uh, the unparalleled support by the United Kingdom to Ukraine. Kyiv has been the heart of a diplomatic swirl recently. The leaders of France, Germany, Italy and Romania had all come here the day before, pledging to support Ukraine's bid to join the European Union. And now, endorsement of that from the very top of the EU. Adamant that Ukraine should be given official candidate status. We have one clear message, and that is, yes, Ukraine deserves European perspective. Yes, Ukraine should be welcomed as a candidate country. This is on the understanding that good work has been done, has been done but important work also remains to be done. Back in Kyiv, President and Prime Minister went for a stroll through the streets of the Ukrainian capital. They do appear easy in each other's company. This is a city now full of sombre reminders of conflict, but it's also a showcase for the potent power of resistance. Against all odds, Ukraine aspires to a brighter future. Adam Parsons, Sky News.